Welcome back to the Nutramedical Report and some of my favorite guests and the favorite hour of the week after, of course, the first hour, which is the firing line, is Hour 3 on Fridays with John Moore, who has his own radio show, the LibertyMan.com, his co-host and Morrison Scientist. And John, sometimes you can only stay a segment, but it's a powerful segment. Uh, what's the latest news? You've got some great contacts. Your background, of course, being Special Forces. You're a forensic uh, legal investigator of, for crime. So you've got a, a accurate and what I call a great conspiracy scientist mind, is uh, the words of Tex Mars. And Ann Morrison is uh, sharp in a whole range of scientific areas. You've been an expert also, John, on the area of space weather, uh, geopolitical, and earth changes. And so it's very popular. People need to prepare for what's happening. We've got lots of earth changes literally in the wake of uh, what's happening with Dane Wigington. We talk about UV light. We talk about uh, sea levels. Well, what's on the radar today? Okay. Well, thank you for having me, uh, Doctor, as always. Uh, what's on the uh, agenda today is the Stratospheric Observatory for Infrared Astronomy. The acronym is SOFIA. This is, belongs to NASA. It's a 100-inch uh, diameter telescope that views in the infrared light spectrum uh, right. mounted in the back of a 747 aircraft. It arrived in um, Christchurch, New Zealand uh, a few days ago. It will be there running missions up until next Thursday, August the 1st. Uh, what's significant about this, uh, well, there are several things. First of all, the, the public record is significant because it is in the, in the southern hemisphere. And um, our concern, of course, is the 10th planet is visible in, only in the, in the infrared light spectrum for 11 right. out of 12 months a year. Now, here's the back story. Um, my private source, a woman I've been working with for about six years, uh, she's connected to a uh, Washington insider family. I won't go into any more detail to protect her identity, but um, about four weeks ago, four or five weeks ago, she got a call telling her that when she saw Sophia going to the southern hemisphere, that was her heads up that the tenth planet was getting closer to us. Right. So I think that's very significant uh, in light of the uh, mainstream uh, press release that is anybody can find if you put Sophia and uh, NASA and New Zealand and your search and you'll get the NASA press release describing right what now. I'm talking about. So There's I not, by the way, yeah, that's not the only imaging technology. technology. That's not the only imaging technology. You're an expert on So what other imaging have they had in place for four to five decades down there? Uh, and, and you can jump in too, but what other imaging is down there watching in uh, in uh, the X-ray telescope range, infrared? There's a thing called a Pi meson scope. It's under the ice sheet there in Antarctica at the uh, at the Ross at the Ross ice shelf. Uh, there's a lot of stuff at McMurdo Bay. People don't realize it's a consortium of international nations watching the southern hemisphere. Right. They've been doing this since the Pioneer 10, where they were looking at the perturbations discovered first by Tycho Brahe, the uh, I believe Danish. Uh, astronomer that discovered the perturbations of, of Neptune. They were explained by Newton and later uh, further qualified by Einstein and other scientists. We know that, that there is a, uh, a large, uh, highly gravitational object, but there's also, uh, what are, and I'm going to give more specifics, the object that's coming in is in the southern ecliptic. It returns every 3,600 and roughly 15 years. I call it the Passover star. It's the star that the ancients knew as Heraclitus. There's a whole bunch of other names, the devil star, right. the Satan star. Right. This well, right. is this star doesn't come on the, uh, the ecliptic plane of the planets. It brings in a storm of comets and asteroids. When it passes through the asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter, it's going to cause asteroid storms and other problems. But its power is it has 200 times more the magnetic field than the sun. And it's a tiny fraction of its size, but it's magnetic field. So it operates at a distance. And if you look at uh, Professor McCanny's work, he's not making any public statements on it, although he did in the past about uh, Planet 10, which is really a red dwarf. People need to know it's not a brown dwarf. It's not a physical planet. It is only visible in the infrared or X-ray spectra. So you can't see this. It's very dark. So if you're looking at it, it's quite small compared to other objects, but it is very, very powerful in terms of its magnetic flux fields. As I mentioned on Lorenz last night, I talked about some astrophysics, some quantum astrophysics. In our world, there's five dimensions. The Higgs boson actually is a quantum tunneled uh, micro wormhole. There is a unit of time space called a chronon. 
and that's the fourth dimension, the time space, the reason why they can't quantify except using external accelerators near the speed of light, the Higgs boson, is because it's actually a microscopic wormhole. So there's a granularity to time space and reality, and in fact what they've delineated at the Hadron Collider is the pixelation, the pixels, just like our world is a hologram, the pixels of reality. Uh, our lower world is in five dimensions, is the world of entropy or decay or loss of order and the higher dimensions from the 6th to the 12th are the orders of hyperspace or order which is why they're called the spirit world the world where our, our, our part of our, our, we exist in both hyperspace which is why man's number is 6 uh, the prince of the power of the air is the power of Lucifer he is still in the second heaven which is in the spirit world he hasn't yet descended physically but is coming down here through his minions through the nephilim through transdimensional uh, avataring our royals which is why although people kind of say you know hey it's wonderful that they had this little baby they have to understand all of these people through the royals race through the ancient cultures and atlantis and thereafter were bred specifically to be avatar by transdimensionals it says in the book of daniel that they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men what they're really saying is they literally bred bodies to be inhabited by the spirits after sex magic rituals and human sacrifice to be bred and to be avatared by transdimensional demonic entities so the nephilim are among us and there are royals there are global elite they're the people who go to bohemian grove they're the corporate heads of corporations they're the people that tell the president and his men what to do and they are avatar and they they channel <clears throat> demonic knowledge and satanic powers and they try, to, they try to literally control our civilization. We are ruled over by powers and principalities as it says in Ephesians. And if people think this is a delusion, every single religious group and right in our Bible, right from one beginning to the other, tells you that this is straight up. We're not just dealing with people that are greedy. We're not just dealing with people that are socio-psychopathic. We're dealing with people that are, that are possessed. And uh, people need to uh, grasp that. They need to understand that this is what's going on. John, your I comments. couldn't agree more. The other thing, Dr. Bill, uh, apparently, and I'm sure you already know this, of the 98 million uh, polio vaccines administered between 1955 and 1963, 30-plus million of them uh, apparently were contaminated with a cancer virus. Yeah, that's probably the SV40, simian virus 40. And by the way, what they knew when they were making this vaccine that SV40 was present in the viral cultures, they didn't care. Uh, you may or may not know this, but Cornell University did research on the brains and grew the viruses from childhood vaccines and people that have dementia. And 28% of the people with dementia in their neuropathology lab at Cornell University in New York City discovered their childhood vaccine contaminated viruses like SV40 grew in their oligodendrocytes and their glial cells in their brain tissue on cell culture. So when you look, see somebody with dementia, they don't just have BSC or don't just have vascular disease. They have childhood vaccine viruses that are like simian virus 40 growing in their brain tissue from their vaccines. So what's the countermeasure, if any? Take our, we have uh, three major antipathogenics and immunoglobulins. Uh, Neutriodine, which will kill all known pathogens, Allison Med, and Silver 100, which is the most powerful silver in history. Uh, we also have Immunoglobulins, Immunomax, and I have Nutri Immune Defense, which I designed, which will kill all capsulated DNA and RNA viruses, and you need to take it continuously. It also has IP6 that gets rid of the Fenton reaction, which is necessary for pathogens, including viruses, to cut through tissue planes. It requires free iron, and when you get behind that with IP6, it, it gets rid of that reaction so it can't penetrate through tissue planes and the anhydrous catechin, which we is the most powerful antioxidant in the world, the uh, one from its own R&T company. So well, 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 Dr. we have our antipathogenics. I think people need to have specific protocols of what to take, how much, yeah. and when. Right. Well, uh, here I recommend this right now. They should be taking Allison Med twice a day. They should be taking Silver 100, at least one spray or three drops per 20 pounds to 30 pounds body weight three times a day. They should be taking 10 drops of nitriodine uh, twice a day uh, for an adult. And it should be taking Immunomax or five capsules of Nutrimune twice and a day. for how long, sir? As long as they want to live. do this? As long as they want to live. We do work quiet. <laughs> Nowadays, I'd be, we would have gone to jail. 
We have an anklet on or something. So uh, let's hear from Ann Morrison. Ann, um, Dane Wigington has been on rents a bunch of times lately, and he's talked to me about UV light. I tried to explain the balance of the, the, the sources of ultraviolet light. The first is this approaching uh, planet X, which is a red dwarf, is causing increase in heating inside the planets, which are causing problems with planetary climate and volcanism on all the planets that have a melted core, because all of the planets that are there, except for a lot of the you know, the moons are in fact nuclear reactors. Our planet Earth is a nuclear reactor with a nuclear core that's generating abiotic oil. It's not generated by dinosaurs and ferns, it's generated abiotically, which is why we have so damn much of the soil. Uh, there's literally oceans of it. Um, and then on top of that, we have the sun is spewing out the last 30 to 40 years. I spent an entire evening with Dr. Isley after I shared with him that I was the one of the doctors taking a pair of pilots flying geoengineering flights out of Buckley and Peterson Air Force Base, and he gave me the Federation of Earth's documents, and there are geoengineering documents that they submitted from the World Constitution Parliament Association, which was founded in the United Nations in 1958, and he explained in great detail, he was in his, I think, 70s or 80s at the time when he told me this, he was so excited. I understood the physics and the chemistry of it, but these guys are crazy. Uh, number one, they are degrading the upper atmosphere, but it's a minor part. The biggest problem is the sun is actually giving off more dangerous radiation. That's number one. And it also varies from hour to hour. It's not just steady. Most people, when we talked about this with Professor McCanny, a lot of people made big assumptions that the output of light is steady from day to day, week to week. It's not. It can even vary from hour to hour, and after a CME, you can have strobing with a very dramatic change in the spectrum of light coming off the sun, including x-rays, high-energy ultraviolet B, C, and D, which is death, uh, can go on for hours, six to eight hours after a CME explosion on the sun. So um, a lot of the assumptions people make, you know, uh, as Forrest Gump says, stupid is as stupid does. As soon as you make an assumption, you've already stuck your foot in the bear trap uh, intellectually. And uh, so I'd like you to respond to that. We have three reasons. We've got Fukushima now chewing up the upper atmosphere with xenon, krypton, and radioiodine-131. We've got geoengineering with nanoparticles of thorium, strong, uh, thorium, barium, and aluminum, which basically are paramagnetic, used to create a torsion field to image the earth, create radiomagnetic mirrors to image through the earth, and also to create interferometry fields for biological weaponization of space. So they create a plasma field 100 million degrees like an explosion, like a nuclear weapon without a missile. And it's used to primarily, quote, deflect a great CME. In fact, that's the reason why Dr. Isley told me this. So their stupid idea to deflect a CME, which was originally conceived by um, the... Uh, early physicists of the Manhattan Project was to put it out at 20,000 miles. And instead of doing that, they decided it's easier to stick it up at 73 to 80,000 uh, feet, which is stupid. <laughs> uh, and But that's what they did. And, of course, they don't realize the chemistry is real simple, and also they try to blame it on chlorofluorocarbons, and bricks don't float in a pool, which means the chlorofluorocarbon molecules never got to the upper atmosphere. Methane hydrates do, and carbon dioxide does. And the worst of these is a surge of methane hydrates is caused by oceanic heating, ultraviolet light from space, and uh, things like the Gakal Range, which is 1,600 kilometers long in the Arctic Ocean, is a mile down, as high as the Swiss Alps, <clears throat> and there's giant amounts of methane being bubbled up from the ocean floor everywhere, not just in the Gulf of Mexico off of Penland Marine Corps Base. We have it right here five miles away. We have it Indian Ocean up near Aceh, where they had a giant tsunami back in 2004. Uh, people don't get the thing that the Earth is going through convulsions because this object, Planet X, is coming near and it's starting to change the uh, nuclear reactions and criticality of our planet and the surface reactions of the sun and these superstorms are filaments of plasma. Uh, of course, the average person in university doesn't understand advanced plasma physics. They don't understand astro quantum mechanics and they don't even ask good questions and when you do ask questions they kind of look at you like you're either an idiot or you're crazy and the fact is if you ask good questions and you have contacts that I have that are classified then they start to take notes and realize like oh my god and I got inside government contacts to say what questions were asked on Deagle's show who did he have on and how the hell did they know it 
and that includes you, John, and Ann. You ask good questions. And we try to raise, even if we don't have all the data, because the government tries to hide this data. They don't want us to know that, by the way, we moved Sophia down to Antarctica because we think this thing's coming in, and we know that we're in the midst of a famine. We're going to have super volcanism and earthquakes all over the planet, and the ozone layer is going poof, and we're getting poisoned with ultraviolet light that's going to shut down the oxygen carbon cycle, and basically our oxygen concentration, which makes the ozone layer, is going to go... See you later, guys. And all the plants, including the phytoplankton, are already dying from pollution from Fukushima. But now we're poisoning the carbon oxygen cycle with cesium-134, radioiodine. And now we've got UV shock from space. And people don't think we have a problem. <laughs> well, the ultraviolet shock is a, is a big worry. And that's because it's uh, creating skin cancers in younger and younger people. That's one way you right. can tell that there's more UV now. Because it used to be that it would take uh, melanoma maybe 70 years to develop on a person. Exactly. In fact, the way you can tell is go in the middle of the day when there's 11 or 12 levels scale on the UV sites, and you gave us a bunch of links. I want you to send me those links again because I'm going to post all the links up so people say, Deagle, you talk too fast, you interrupt your guests, and you're full of it. I want them to listen and look at the government sites themselves and stop jabbering and stop trying to waste all of their effort trying to attack the messenger. When they look at this, they'll go aside at 11 o'clock to 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, and they'll feel like a kid that took a large elastic one flick and say, oh my gosh, that stings. How come my eyes are burning? It's because you're being cooked. That's right. The uh, UV band C especially will... Uh We'll create melanoma of the eyes. Um, but the Orterygian, which is that thing that crosses to the center of the eye. By the way, we do have detectors. They're now available right now, A and B light detectors from less EMF, and we have a UVC detector that, that uh, Mil de Toffel can get you as well. So you can get an A plus B detector right now, and you can get a C detector. Uh, and these are available. So if you contact Less EMS through our website, Nutramedical, go down to Less EMF, contact Emil de Toffel, you can get one now because the, the biggest warning, believe it or not, is not only to have a radiation detector, we have also one that's half the price of the Inspector Plus that's very accurate for radiation detector because we're expecting major hydrovolcanic explosions from Fukushima. But the biggest immediate danger that's going to be real sneaky is going to be an ultraviolet light surge, either from a CME or just the sun going crazy or the ozone layer saying, hey, I'm out of here. And someday people are going to go outside and say, like it says in the Bible, and there should be five months where death will flee for them and everyone that lives will have a grievous sore that took the mark. Well, they're not going to believe what I'm telling you, which is prophetically, that there will be a time where people will only be able to go out and do business in the evening or at night. And if they go during the day for that five months, it says in the Bible, then death will flee from them because they'll get grievous sores from being out in the ultraviolet light. It'll burn their eyes, it'll burn their skin, and they'll get sick, and it suppresses your T cells and your immune system. People say, no, Dr. Deagle, that's not going to happen. Well, you better take notice. It's happening. It's not something we're predicting. It's something we're describing. Well, that's right. Uh, we now know that melanoma is increasing in young adults, people that are in their 30s, maybe up to 35, and even in teenagers. Now, melanoma normally didn't, um, wasn't caught until somebody was in their 70s or 80s. So yeah. I don't know how much more ultraviolet we're getting, but we're getting enough so that it takes long, it takes a shorter time, shorter amount of time yeah. for the melanoma to... Welcome back, and uh, John, you know you're a prep expert, uh, and of course your website is thelibertyman.com, uh, and your site is homeland uh, uh, defense uh, for you. Defense, uh, homeland defense for you. Com. Uh, John, every day you do your show, and you're tracking a lot of issues. I know we talked about this before that uh, Dr. Professor McCain is going to be very cautious before he releases information about the tenth planet, although he's. Over the last decade on the jmccsci.com, he's talked, he's been on the Discovery Channel and the Learning Channel, etc. Um, and we talk about the comets. We, this is the year of the comet, and he mentioned that this comet's not five kilometers across. I pulled up the actual papers uh, that are published in Open Science this week, and there's millions of tons of dust literally every day being released from this comet. This is a big sucker comet. Uh, 
it's estimated by Professor McCann, and he's being conservative because he doesn't want his things, things off the wall. Right. This is probably the largest comet to pass the inner solar system, and it's a sun grazer in over 3,000 years. It's a big fella, and it's going to pass by in September, October, November. It's going to take a month to completely pass through the tail of it by Mars. And in November, it's going to actually sun graze at 700,000 kilometers over the sun, which means it's going to make a great big storm. If it just happens to be that that storm is aimed at us, we're in deep doo-doo. You know, astrophysically, if we have a CME that even glances us, we're going to have a bad day. Absolutely. Well, well, Professor McKinney is awfully often quoted and misquoted. A lot of people want to uh, uh, grab his toe coattails and, and ride his... Uh, yeah, and we're not going to do that. But we, I have my own independent so sources I, for years right. about the uh, idea of what we call it. I don't call it Planet X. I call it the Passover star or the Red Dwarf because uh, it's not a planet. It's a it's a basically a failed star that didn't fully ignite like a yellow dwarf sol. Uh, it is a very powerful magnetic field generator, and it operates at a distance both gravitationally and through its dipole effect. Uh, because when you bring a magnetic dipole near a nuclear reaction, you speed up the criticality of the reaction. So that's what's going on. And uh, most of the planets are nuclear reactors, and the sun, of course, its reactions occur, as Professor McKinney says, not deep in the core of the sun, but on the surface. The nuclear reactions on the sun occur in the plasma jets around the planet, because the actual surface of the planet is around five to 6,000 degrees. Believe it or not, it's not millions. The surface of the sun is around 6,000, maybe up to 10,000 degrees, which will melt most of our metals, but it's not millions. The temperature is the heliosphere above the planet surface of the sun, because it's a large, even since planet or object. And when they have a plasma filament, those filaments can be millions of miles long, above there, 100,000 miles above the surface of the planet where the real heat is, 100 million degrees. And when these things explode, they are like 100 million degrees with millions and millions of, of tons of plasma and there's a number of waves and then you can give us a list of them you get light visible light and infrared light then you get an electron storm that comes uh, the CME and uh, then finally you get uh, you get protons which take a little longer to arrive which can be a couple of days and then the, finally the plasma which is uh, arrives in the planet it's two to four days after the initial light so you often get actually a warning sign that hey when the plasma and the protons arrive, you're going to have a really rough time because it, it perturbs the magnetosphere, can trigger off all earthquakes and volcanoes and cause really bad weather to happen. Uh, can you explain a little bit about that? Well, the, the uh, Professor McCanny talks about action at a distance where these bodies will uh, act on us with their gravitational effect and uh, electrical energy on both. And uh, there are accounts within recorded history of lightning bolts, or what, we, what might be called lightning bolts, between planets, and uh, observations yeah. of the atmosphere and water of Mars being sucked off the planet. There's written accounts of that in our own history. Um, right. So these that's why they refer to the god Jupiter as a as a thrower of lightning bolts because they could see lightning bolts literally jumping off of Jupiter into inner uh, solar space. So, you know, the reason why these ancients, they weren't stupid. People say, well, these must be stupid to think there's a god that throws lightning bolts. It's because they could see the plasma discharge across interstellar space. Absolutely. Absolutely. And these things could happen again. And uh, the possibility of them happening in our lifetimes is pretty great. Right. Well, we have conditions now that are basically identical. And, you know, Moses, who's out in the desert of Midian, he was trained up. You know, most people don't know what the name Moses means. Uh, and I like to use a little humor here. Um, if you see somebody from Norway and their name is Johnson, it would be like calling somebody son, you know? Right. It, that, it, the fact is the name Moses means he was drawn out of Ramesses. So his actually real name is Ramesses Moses. It's like, in other words, he would have been the next pharaoh. And he was not biologically yeah, Moses the Yeah, his a name. Right. His title was, this guy is so smart, so remarkable, so well-trained by the high priest, so exceptional. Even though he's a Hebrew, he's the adopted son who's going to be the next pharaoh. So the Ramesses II was an was a inbred idiot that replaced Moses when he had to head off to the desert of, Moses, uh, of Midian after he killed the Egyptian who was persecuting Hebrew slaves when he realized he was Hebrew. So what people need to understand that Moses was not an average guy. 
No. He was no. very. He was a doctor. Believe it or not, he was a surgeon. He was a general. He was a uh, an astronomer. Uh, he was a ling- linguist. He could literally do virtually anything, grow from growing food to metallurgy to to, to literally controlling an army and a battlefield. And back in those times, the generals also were surgeons because they had to treat their own people who were hurt in the battlefield, dress their wounds, sew them up, and prevent infections. Most people don't know that. They don't know how remarkable Moses was when he wrote the Pentateuch, the first five books of the Bible, directly transcribed by God, which they talk about with the Bible code. He is probably one of the most amazing minds of the ancient world. Agreed. Absolutely. Right. So when people say Moses, that meant he was going to be Pharaoh. Okay? So the devil had his plan to say, this guy here, we don't want him to serve God. We're going to make him Pharaoh and suck him off to make sure that he does not serve the Most High God. Because if he writes this Pentateuch, which starts the Bible, things are going to go south for Lucifer and his buddies. Well, we can only hope. <laughs> yeah, well, they are going south. And I mentioned also last night, I tell people, I said, this is something I want to breach because there's a lot of Christians out there who need a kind of what I call a setting things right. Uh, and this is, by the way, something that's not my opinion. It's one of those things that once in a while I'll say, this is a thus saith the Lord. The rapture, and this is what Jesus' words are, not mine, is there the vulture is, and you can take the Aramaic and the Hebrew, where the vulture is, there is the body. And he says, I will take the tares and pull them out and burn them in the fires. So the rapture that people keep on talking about to get out of here when things are like get out of out of hell card, you know, the world end of the world is a hell of a mess card. Forget it. God is going to keep us from that hour of tribulation because he's going to take the evil out of the world. He's going to stop this mess. He's going to intervene when things look darkest. Our God is God. Just like in ancient Israel when he preserved the Hebrews, he's going to take the evil out. They're not going to get an advance warning like the day I think that the earth stood still, that movie back in the 50s or 60s. Right. There's no advance warning. God's just going to do it. And one is in two in the field and one is taken. The one taken isn't the good guy heading off to heaven. The one taken is the evil one taken off for judgment. Well, we're going to in interesting times, no doubt. We do indeed. And any uh, comments about the uh, H7N9 or the Hajj and the H uh, and this new MERS coronavirus too? Because uh, we have a converging superstorm of bad news. But again, our God is God, thank God. Because if you weren't a believer, you better start hoping and praying that you become a, if you're a Christian and a believer real quick. Because if you, you know, if you run out of time and and it just don't have more spittle to spit on the people who want to give the news. People out there better listen. If there isn't a God to intervene, we're done. Our world, our civilization, our society, our nation has no hope without the one that brings hope, the Most High God and His Son, Yeshua HaMashiach, the Father that came in the flesh. Well, the Middle East Respiratory Syndrome uh, Coronavirus, uh, the World Health Organization, had a uh, had a uh, meeting, an emergency meeting, and they decided that it did not warrant um, health regulations at this time. So, so travel is <laughs> yeah, not right. restricted between countries. Yeah, in other words, panic is delayed, but not pre- not not completely preempted. get some of your comments here, Ann and John. Uh, I pulled up one of the Drudge articles here, and the first one is Chris Christie saying Rand Paul is dangerous, he says, you know, that for challenging government surveillance programs and failing to understand the dangers of terrorism. How about this, Christie? You don't only had a stomach bypass, you had a brain bypass. John, your comments, and what do you think? Well, Dr. Deagle, we, uh, we managed to... Uh survive World War II without having these kind of draconian surveillance systems, despite having uh, an avowed enemy in the form of Germans who were Caucasians and many spoke perfect English. We managed to survive that without those kind of draconian measures. Our avowed enemies now uh, aren't Caucasian, uh, frequently don't uh, uh, speak perfect English, and I think we can survive it again without these draconian 
uh, surveillance techniques and methods. Right. Well, well, while they're doing, while Christie's making this, his 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 Oreo cookie twin Obama is making this statement in quotes. Throughout our history, Islam has contributed to the character of our country, and Muslim Americans and their good works have helped to build our nation. And we've seen the results. We've seen those results of generations of Muslim immigrants, farmers, and factory workers helping to lay. Let me just see this now. Helping to, to, to lay the railways and build our cities. President Obama said a dinner celebrating Ramadan on Thursday at the White House. This is the fifth such dinner that President Obama has hosted. No wonder he said a joke last week in Hollywood saying, I'm not the vigorous 51, you know, 51 I'm not the vigorous young Muslim social activist I used to be. Duh, he's having <laughs> spasms of truth. The last time he said something true, he says, you know, that Trayvon Martin would have been his son. I think you're right. A tall, athletic, black man who's covered with tattoos, is scoping in windows with tools to go and rob people, and has a bad attitude, and doesn't mind beating the crap out of people because they ask his name. I guess that would have been his son. So right. now he's actually, in literally a couple of weeks, said two things that are correct. He's actually saying, I'm a Muslim, get over it. Pretty much. And he's Pretty celebrating much. Ramadan when he tells us that we should have surveillance. When Islam is the religion, and on the latest, by the way, this is it, Chrislam, which is the stupid amalgamation of Christianity and Islam, is, this is a thus saith the Lord, not open to opinion, by the way, is the relationship of, is the religion of the Antichrist and the globalists. They figure if they can put these two together, they got us all. In fact, they'll make it against the law. If you criticize Muhammad or Allah or the Quran, and you don't think that Isa when he comes back, should kill Jews and Christians and make them become Muslims, then you're anathema, and in fact, criticizing can get your ass in jail. In fact, if I said this word, these words right now in any Canadian radio or television station, I'd have an RCMP officer zip tie me or put me in shackles and take me away, and they'd shut down the CRTC license of that station instantly. And I challenge anybody up in Canada to tell me otherwise. I know I've been there. It's a New Day facility in 2000, and Dr. Deagle does not sugarcoat. I do not withhold. I punch through like Gerald Salente, the target. I do not play around. And you know this, John and Ann. I piss people off because I tell the truth. Well, there's nothing less proper than the truth in the kind of situation we've got today. Yeah, it's, it's, it's over the top. And when people want to kind of sugarcoat it, and they're telling us we need to be under surveillance like this guy Christie, they say, no, no, they missed Christie. They did the bypass a little too high. They bypassed your brain, too. <laughs> <laughs> now, we also have, by the way, North Pole, melting ice forms lake in the North Pole. People need to realize we are thoroughly, and this, by the way, is right in photos. This is from, let's see where this article is, CBS News. And it shows it. it shows it two uh, contrasting pictures of the North Pole from April and July of this year. Wow. You look at it in April, you see the giant ice sheet, and it's open ocean. Do you know that the North Pole now is the only time in recorded history it's open ocean? Probably <laughs> since God knows when. You know, millions of years ago. Open ocean across the, the Arctic. <laughs> open ocean. Well, we, we knew that was coming, and, and uh, it's just more of what we've been expecting yeah exactly and of course you're the expert on this you've told me years ago John you traveled with the Prophecy Club that you saw documents showing that they're expecting a 70 foot plus rise in sea level and that's cataclysmic for a number of areas along the eastern coast of the United States most of the district of criminals in Washington D.C. and Virginia and many of these state areas would be underwater <laughs> significantly underwater right. if it rose 70 feet wouldn't it it would it would wipe out where uh, a huge percent of our population uh, live, work, and play. Yeah, exactly. Um, and what, what what are you finding on on your radar in terms of other uh, news items? Well, I want you to know that uh, the uh, chief of police of St. Louis, uh, St. Louis City, has requested the use of drones in his police activities in North St. Louis. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah. <laughs> I pulled up a Campus Reform Watch article here. It says, watch, students sign petition to legalize abortion after childbirth. <clears throat> what do you think of that? <clears throat> this is a George Mason University signed a petition on Wednesday demanding lawmakers legalize fourth trimester abortions. Wow. 
I guess that's one, uh, that's one of those, you don't just hire. That's one of those uh, uh, spoofs where they uh, ask these silly questions that are off the off the edge of the map. And by the way, here we have Uma Abedin with her uh, <laughs> her crazy husband. You know, Wiener. He has a perfect name, doesn't he? <laughs> Yeah, he does. Yeah. People need to know she is following taqiyya and uh, and uh, all these other laws of Islam, which is do anything is anti-Islamic, as long as even if you marry a Jew, who's probably sabote and, and very twisted, she can get into the State Department and do several work on the side, which is completely illegal while she's working in the State Department, and she smirks at the public and pretends that everything's okay when her husband is still having video and audio trysts on the internet I mean this is craziness and we tolerate this stuff and Huma Abedin best friends and sexual buddies to her lesbian overlord Hitlery Rotten Clinton the grand dame of masonry here in North America That's the highest right. level female Hitler, mason <laughs> yeah the highest level female mason in the western world outside the queen of England herself interesting huh? it is absolutely interesting yeah, she's got a real big transdimensional run in her. Oh, that's all right. Ronald Reagan's wife used to uh, consult with astrologers. <laughs> I'm sure. That, I'm sure that the uh, that the devils, like uh, the screw tape letters, would have some interesting comments. That C.S. Lewis could write a little short story about uh, Ronald Reagan's wife. <laughs> yeah, that have would you ever be read the screw tape movie. letters? Uh, so, so C.S. Lewis had a very productive imagination and a way of drawing out the biblical truths in a shocking and realistic way that I think few authors could actually tell people just what we're dealing with well now that that was his opinion about what his the opinion was a re- his opinion was maybe not the exact truth but it was shocking enough to make us start to think about it I'll give you that <laughs> yeah yeah exactly uh, so um What's on the agenda for the next few weeks? What do you see coming? The Hajj. Yeah, I'm, yeah, the Hajj is going to be a big deal. When this, uh, when the Ramadan is over and the Hajj starts, two to three million people arrive in Saudi Arabia. I talked to my friend uh, Jerry, and he was over in Saudi Arabia, and he says when they arrive there, these people they get all kinds of notices from the Saudi government because they're freaked out by the fact that this is not just in one or two local areas. Listen to this story, and I want to hear it. it's, you know, the news is so funny, it's almost humorous. It's like if I had somebody writing, you know, a script for me. They made up this lie, the World Health Organization and local infectious disease, that it's bats infecting local dates that are causing people to die of SARS-2. And they tried to do gene sequences of the virus, right? And they didn't match up, but they still persisted with the story, so the date market in eastern Saudi Arabia has dried up. <laughs> and, and this is their cover to say, no, no, it's not pressing between people, and don't worry, get on your airliner and go to France and come back and infect people, no problem. Don't worry about it. You might kill your relative who's got diabetes and they're 72 years of age. You might yourself die in the ICU, but don't worry about it. Just get on that airliner. If you cough, don't worry about covering your mouth. Don't worry about the air conditioning systems. Don't have any air filter systems. The stewardess isn't going to walk over and give you a mask if you start coughing your head off. If you got resistant DB or SARS. Don't worry about it. She's going to give you a drink. <laughs> Make sure you're well hydrated while you kill everybody else in the flight and they all die. Or just get sick for a week or two and then only one or two dies. But don't worry. Virus will persist. That's a scary Craziness. scenario. We're dying of stupidity. So true. Well, I, actually, I got a new term now. I coined the term, and I mentioned it last night on rents, of what I call vicious stupidity. We're dying of vicious idiocy. I mean, it really is crazy uh, that we don't even have common sense. It's amazing. Your comments, John? Well, I agree with Dr. Bill. It's been great as always to be with you. Yeah, look at this. NSA spy facility, seven times bigger than the Pentagon. Come on. You shake your head and you say, no, no, it can't be. Oh, my God.